Are you tired of staring at a blank sheet of paper wondering what to paint with a new set of paints? Well, I was too, which is why I turned to the experts, my Facebook community. What they suggested really sparked my creativity and I decided to paint these pebbles that I had laying around in my camera roll for such a long time. So thank you everybody in my Facebook community for helping me get out of a watercolour rut. Let's paint these together. Okay, so I haven't used these charcoal paints before and I'll talk to you about them as I work through the tutorial. Now you can see here, I've traced down the photograph that I referenced earlier on and I'll tell you later on how you can have that yourself to trace down for free. Now, these are really unusual paints and we'll talk about them as I work through the tutorial, but you can see here that I'm just using one of the water brushes that I had within my own set. Now, these little paints come with their own water brush, but I preferred the ones that I had because they had a slightly, um, a slightly finer point. If you want to join in with this tutorial, you can use whichever paints you want to, of course, but I had them kicking around and I hadn't used them before. And as I said at the start of this video, I was really struggling as to what to paint. So I'm working from a photograph sort of really vaguely and I'm just using it as a point of reference as well as the little pebbles that I'd collected on a trip to um, the Gower Coast down in Wales last year. So these paints, um, these are from Derwent and I'll read you what it says on Derwent's website about them. They are are uniquely formulated tinted charcoal paints. They're water soluble with just a hint of colour. They're easy to mix with a matte textured finish. You can blend the colours wet and you can apply them in layers very much in the way that you would with watercolour and you can smudge or draw over them when dry. Now I thought this was a perfect subject for this kind of paint. I hadn't used them before and I'll talk to you about my thoughts on them as I work through. So you can see here, I'm using these to paint wet on wet. That means that you just apply the paint to the paper and just drop in the paint as you see fit. And you can see me there just lifting out some paint with a little brush there. You can use any watercolour brush to paint with these. I don't think it does any damage to your brush. I have used watercolour brushes later on in this tutorial um, and it was absolutely fine. What I found with these, and as I sort of expected, they were quite, quite sort of um, gritty to use. Um, they applied to the paper very much um, in a similar way to watercolour paint because they are water-based, but they're definitely uh, a little more um, grainy and gritty. Um, but I was very surprised at the, the results that I got with them. This little set comes with a swatch card with it and I would say ignore the colours on that because they are very different when you swatch them out yourself. So if you have got a set of these or you want to buy them, they're fairly inexpensive, but do swatch out the colours. You can see all the colours there once they're swatched out properly and you will get a really big surprise. I wasn't expecting to get this many different tonal variations and different colour shades and tones with these, with this little tiny set of paints. To be honest with you, I was at the point of ditching them. I really didn't like them. I maybe would have given them to one of my students. But now that I've used them, I really, really like them. So let's talk about the application process here in case you want to join in with me. I'm using two application processes, wet and wet, which means you wet the area that you want to drop the pigment, and wet on dry, where you apply the pigment to the paper that you need. The paper I'm using is from Arches, and it's a rough surface 300 GSM, and it's 100% cotton. I really love this paper. I use it a lot in my tutorials, but as always, use whatever you have. I'm an advocate of using whatever you have in your own set. You don't have to go out and buy the materials that I'm using, but in case you want to buy them, I will link them in the description box underneath this video so that you can check them out for yourself. The watercolour brushes that I'm using um, come in a set of three or four I think from Derwent and I decided to use them because like I said earlier on they have got a finer point. The colours that I'm using for these pebbles I'm not going strictly to the photograph I'm just mixing them up so that they have a different colour to the one that's sitting next to it. I just wanted them to look different. We're not after photorealism here we're just about having fun with our paints and just using the things that maybe would have been sitting in our palettes in our paint set 
and just go into waste. And I'm all about using up what I have. So I really, really enjoy using this kind of paint set to do this. You can see that first layer is now dry. So I'm going over it using a different color and I'm leaving out certain areas of the pebble to make it look realistic. We're back to wet and wet. You can see there that I put the water on first and I'm just dropping in the colours. I'm not telling you which colours I'm using as I'm working through because there's no rhyme or reason to it. As long as the colours are different to the pebble that's sitting next to it, you're absolutely fine. So I'm just continuing the process working around each pebble. I'm not going to show you me painting every single pebble here because we would be here for a very, very long video. So what I'll do once I've done a few is skip to the next section and I'll be doing that throughout this tutorial. But you can follow along. There should be enough information there for you to paint along with me if you want to do this lovely little painting using some rather unusual paints. I'm so glad that I tried them out and once again thank you to my Facebook community for helping me decide what to paint. I had them sitting around for a little while, I think I bought them last year from Jackson's and just didn't know what to paint with them. Um, but I did have some photographs in my camera roll from my trip to the seaside and luckily I was able to, um, to use that to paint these today. So we're not after photorealism, like I said at the start, it's all about just having fun sometimes and just using your creativity and um, just enjoying painting. Now, if you are enjoying this video, could I ask you please to hit the like button underneath? It's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content, which means that YouTube will eventually push it out to more people and um, more people can get to watch this video. That would really, really help me. And also, if you are new here, we do launch new tutorials every single Tuesday. They are full length and we do mostly botanical work on this channel. Um, and if this is something that appeals to you, could I ask you please to hit that red button below and subscribe to my channel and that way you won't miss new uploads every single week. If botanical painting is something that interests you, just to let you know that we do have a Patreon where every single month we release a longer version of a botanical painting tutorial so that you can really level up with your watercolour painting. We also have a mentorship level so that I can help coach you through your watercolour journey. And in case this is of interest to you, let's take a look. aspiring artist looking to take your skills to the next level, or perhaps you're looking for fresh inspiration, then you may want to consider joining our Patreon. Our Patreon tutorials have much more in-depth instructions and are at a much slower pace and depending on the membership level you choose, you can have personalised feedback from me and video calls. Unlike our YouTube tutorials, our Patreon art classes focus on really learning the art of botanical painting and I will guide you step by step through the technique and skills you will need to learn and improve your botanical art. All of our Patreon tutorials are exclusive to my patrons and you won't find them on YouTube. So why not join up to our Patreon and start creating botanical art you can be truly proud of. You won't find any of our tutorials um, from Patreon on YouTube, so if you would like to check us out, we'd love to see you there. You can see here the swatches that I made earlier on and how you need to really swatch up these colours before you uh, start painting with these paints, and they do vary. And this little one here on the side, if you want to paint that, that's a free video on YouTube, which I will link above. You can see that I've done the same thing to all the other pebbles, just working through them one by one, varying the colours, and you can see I've left a couple here to show you. Um, just using a little bit of a cotton paper towel there, I've applied the paint and I'm just patting it like that to create a little bit of texture. It really is, the sky's the limit here, where you can just let your imagination go and just start to play around with textures and using your paint in a way that you wouldn't ordinarily. Like I said, they apply like watercolour, but you'll notice a difference for sure. I did find them a little bit gritty, as I said earlier on, um, but they're certainly something I would like to get used to using. If you've used Derwent Intense Blocks, maybe you'll find them very similar to use. Um, the handling is quite similar, so um, if that's something that you've used before and you're using them in the way that I'm doing, you'll find them very similar in application. Again, I'm just dipping out of the colours, varying them as I work through. 
Have you tried these paints before? Are these something that you've got within your own paint set? If you have, let me know what you think of them in the comments below. Um, do you like them? What do you like about them? Or even what don't you like about them? So I'm using the tip of this water brush and I have a smaller one here. I'm going to start to paint around the pebbles like this. I'm using one of the darker colours and a little less water. I find that these brushes can be a little bit tricky to use. Sometimes you can uh, squeeze a little bit too much water out and that's why I have a little jar of water on the side there. Um, maybe that's cheating. I think maybe you're meant to use them out and about but I do like using them with these type of paints. If you have this set of paints and you haven't used them before, I suggest adding a lot of water to them before you use them. You'll notice that the water gets absorbed really quickly into the pan, thereby making it slightly more difficult to use if you're used to watercolour and if you're used to using watercolour. But don't be put off, give them a go and let me know what you think about them. So you can see, once I've applied that first colour in between the stones, I'm just taking that water brush and taking a tiny bit of that pigment over the pebble itself. This creates a kind of shadow where the pebble joins the, the background. It just makes it look a little bit more natural, but you could just leave it as it is if you want a really stronger look. But I like to take it just over the pebble like this so that it creates the illusion of there being a, a natural shadow where the pebble hits the, the background. just taken a darker colour. I think this was a black shade. I can't remember the name of the colour but it really doesn't matter. Any of the darker shades will do. And I'll continue this process throughout all of the pebbles. You don't have to use a water brush. Remember you can just use an ordinary watercolour brush but make sure that you wash it in clean water after you've finished. I've used my liner brush and a number two snowdrop brown throughout the, the rest of this tutorial and I found that they cleaned up really nicely without any problem. Just working in between the pebbles like this and also around where the pebbles join each other and once again blending out with a damp brush. Each time I blend I pat my brush on my paper towel just to make it nice and clean before I blend it through. And I've done the same to all the other pebbles. Everything is completely dry at this point so we're just finishing off the, um, the areas in between and I can then start to go in with my finer fine liner brush. This is a, a liner brush from Tintoretto. I use it an awful lot in my tutorials. It's really great for finer details with my botanical work. All the brushes I've used are synthetic and are really, really good for, um, for fine detail here. This is a lovely little brush. Like I said, I, used it, I use it quite a lot in my tutorials and it's great for adding finer points. So again, uh, don't worry too much about the colors that I'm using. I'm just switching them up as I go through, picking any darker color from my set. Just going between the pebbles here, adding a little bit of a tighter line where I feel I need to, just picking up some of that darker pigment and adding some darker values as I work through. At the start of this video I mentioned that you can have access to the little traceable of the reference photograph and if you'd like to have access to this it's really easy all you need to do is stay right until the end of this video pause the video screenshot it and you can print it out that way I'll also put it over on our private Facebook group um, called the wonders of watercolor which I will also link in the description box please join us over there because we are an amazing community you can have access to all of our outlines and reference photographs that we have here on YouTube and you can also post your finished paintings and your works in progress and have some feedback from our other incredible members that we have there and our wonderful team of admin and moderators will also help you um, we are an incredible group I'm immensely proud of everybody so do join us there 
continuing the process here, just adding a little bit of shadow, blending it out, and I'll continue the process right the way through. I have skipped a lot of this video, as I said earlier on, I don't want to paint every single element of this because it would be an extremely long video. I think this little piece took me a few hours on and off, um, but a lot of it's repeated. So here we go, everything's finished, and now we need to start to think about building up a few more layers. So we go back to our little paint set here, and once again, I'm just adding a bit of water, dropping in a bit of pigment, and just building up the colours a little bit one by one, just add in the colours as I see fit, with no rhyme or reason. This is where you can really start to use your imagination with watercolour and not worry too much about following that reference photograph to the letter. Many of our botanical paintings are more accurate, so this time we can just let our imaginations do the work and build up the colours as we see fit. Notice how I'm just leaving some of the elements blank and carrying on working around so that we can just add the darker values to certain parts of the pebble and leaving other little bits of it whiter or paler to give it an illusion of a little bit of depth. I didn't want to make them too dark, I wanted them to have that natural pebble look and I'm really happy so far with how it's going. Now at this point I decided to add a little bit of detail, again a bit of a little bit of artistic license and I'm using my Etcher paints, this is the colour that I've used. Um, you don't have to do this to add any fine detail if you don't want to, but I happen to have them kicking around so I thought it might be really cool to add a few sparkly, um, sparkly veins on the pebbles here which I really really like. Um, like I said you haven't got to do this but I really like that effect. So just carrying on the process using my liner brush on this really beautiful gold colour paint. Um, I will list the colours in the description box underneath should you want to join in.
So I'm um, just carrying on, adding a few details and um, here's the finished painting. Let me know what you think.